Good evening, class. My name is Alvin Chung, and today we are going to talk about logbook entries and certificate endorsements required to get your private pilot license. So, to start off, the objective of this lesson today is that you, the student, will be able to develop knowledge of elements related to logbook entries and endorsements uh, as required by the CFI PTS. Key elements for this lesson today is going to be the advisory circular 61. Oh, my bad there. Dot 65 hotel. That's advisory uh, circular. Um, the endorsements required for your private pilot check ride, as well as all the solo endorsements and such, and the required records um, that both the student and the CFI are going to have to keep. So, for our schedule today, uh, discuss objectives, review material, the development, and a conclusion. As a student, I'd like you to participate in discussion, take notes, and ask and respond to questions. The completion standards for this lesson today is going to be that you, the student, understands what is necessary in the logbook, what is necessary for a pilot certificate, uh, and preparing for a practical test, as well as requirements for flight review endorsements and flight instructor records. And as you all should have already done uh, for homework, reading advisor, uh, Advisory Circular 6165. So to start off with, we're going to talk about the private pilot certificate. Of that, we need 40 hours total uh, flight time before we can apply for this check ride, and of those 40 hours, 20 of them has to be dual and 10 hours have to be solo. The final 10 hours can be accumulated from either side. So to start off with the dual side, we're going to need, oh, on my pen mode there, three hours of night training, and one of them has to be a hundred nautical mile trip in total, as well as 10 takeoff and landings uh, in the traffic pattern at night. And this has to be to a full stop. After that, we need to give three hours of cross country time, dual, three hours of sole reference to instrument, or that's going to be your instrument flying or flying with foggles. And after that, we need three hours of check ride prep. All right, on the solo side, you're going to need five hours of cross country solo time. And one of those cross country solos has to be 150 nautical miles total with three landings to a full stop and one segment has to be at least 50 nautical miles straight line distance after that we need Three takeoff and landings at an airport with an operating control tower. Now that we know what is required to get your private pilot certificate, let's start walking through the endorsements and the process to get started on your private pilot certificate as well as moving on. Uh, to the solo and the solo cross countries. So, first off, we have our pre-flight uh, endorsements or things that we have to check. The first one is going to be 6183, and that's just going to be how eligible you are to take the private pilot or to get your student pilot license. And there are two main things in here. You have to be at least 16 years of age, and you need to be able to be uh, English proficient. So moving on from there, we're going to have acronyms or not acronyms. 
um, just sayings to help us remember uh, what's required. So for your pre-flight and solo, that's going to be our Tim Loves Bacon. So to write that out for you, we have T I M. Loves is just in there, and bacon is going to be B C N on pizza. So Tim Loves Bacon on pizza. So let's go into what this all is. So the first one, T and Tim, is going to be your TSA endorsement. And essentially, this is going to say that you have checked and verified that this person is a citizen of the United States or is legally allowed to fly here in the United States, whether they be providing certain documents and such. Next is going to be 6185, and that's going to say you have to apply for a student pilot certificate through IACRA. Now, this is fairly new. It used to be that your student pilot certificate was also the same as your medical, but this is no longer. After that is 6123, and that's going to be our medical certificate. So these are the three things that we need, well, four things we need before a student is able to take flight. Or to say, yeah, before we're able to take flight. After that, we're going to get into the bacon part. So, for our first solo, 6187 Bravo, we need to have a pre-solo written test. On that pre-solo written, there are multiple things we need to make sure we cover. First is going to be airspace. So that's going to be the local airspace that we are we're flying in, whether it be class Golf, Echo, Delta. The student needs to know about that airspace and the characteristics of it. Number two is going to be the POH, essentially, is what I like to put it as. It's going to be the operating characteristics and limitations of the aircraft, specifically for that make and model. And three is going to be any applicable parts of 14 CFR 61 and 91. Essentially, what that's going to say is what a student pilot is limited to doing, um, what they're able to operate, and the regulations surrounding flight. Very important one to teach your students is going to be 91.3, and that's going to be exercising PIC authority. If anything happens in an emergency, you want your student to know that they are able to deviate from any part of the regulations to complete a safe flight. So moving on to the C in bacon. It's going to be 6187, Charlie, 1 and 2. And essentially, all that's going to ask for is that the student has received training in the pre-solo maneuvers and is in pro uh, proficient in the specific make and model. With that, you might be wondering, what are the pre-solo maneuvers? That's actually going to be covered in 6187 Delta. And you will notice later on that if we look at 91 or 6193 here in the solo cross-country, it's going to talk about cross-country maneuvers, and that's also going to be in the Delta section, so right underneath those requirements. But just to clean it up a little bit, we'll back that out, and we'll back this out. Next, the N in bacon. So this is going to be your first 90-day solo in the make and model of that aircraft. And that's going to be just your authorization that this person can solo for the next 90 days. Your student cannot do their first solo without all three of these endorsements. These are important after that, we're going to get to the on pizza part. So, the O is going to be night solo. And this specifies that it's going to be in the same make and model as with the other ones. And it has to expire 90 days after your night training. So this has to be less than 90 days of night training for that endorsement to work. After that, pizza. We're going to have 
a 90 day extension. And that 90 day extension is going to go to 6187 November. This is going to be used in case your student does are uh, isn't able to get up in the air because there's bad weather, there's a family emergency. This just extends that that first 90 day solo endorsement that you gave him. So, those are all the our endorsements and regulations where to find them on what we're going to need to have your student go on a first solo. Now we're going to move into the solo cross country endorsements. So this is all covered under 6193 and 6195 when it comes to certain controlled airspaces and we'll get to that. So to start off 6193 Bravo 1 is going to say if we are going to go less than 25 nautical miles for takeoff and landings in a make and model aircraft. So essentially what this means is your student is going to take off out of an airport, go to a separate airport to do takeoff and landings in a specific make and model. And this is only good for one time. So every time your student takes off out of the airport, that they um, are originating from and goes to a different airport, you will have to re-endorse them. Next, we have 6193 Charlie 1 and 2. This is essentially going to be saying that they have received the training and is, in, and is proficient in the solo cross-country maneuvers. in the specific make, model, and category. Just like your solo, you might be wondering, how do I know what maneuvers they're going to have to do? And that's covered in 6193 Delta. Just like the solo, right after, it's going to be the specific maneuvers that you need to go through. Next is going to be 6193 Charlie 3. And that's going to say that you reviewed the flight planning. Uh, for the specific flight. Or specific route, we should say. On a specific date. Which means you check the weather. And again, in that same make model. After that, we have 6193 Bravo 2, and that's going to be a less than 50 nautical mile repeated flights between two, or, well, between repeated flight between specific airports. After that, we move into the 6195 Alpha and Bravo, and this covers Class B airspace. So 6195 Alpha allows students to fly through Bravo. Bravo airspaces. So essentially, if you have to go through Bravo, um, if there's no possible way to fly around the Bravo, this allows the student to fly through Bravo airspace, saying that you've given them the proper training and that they're able to do it. 6195 Bravo allows students to fly to, from, or at an airport inside of a Bravo airspace. And this is going to be when, um, let's say, there's an airport that's 51 nautical miles away. It's perfect for the trip, but it's a class Bravo. This endorsement allows them to make that landing at that Bravo airport. Or if you're a student originating in a class Bravo airport, you can fly in and out of that airspace uh, to complete your cross-country solos. All right, now that we've gone over 
what it takes to become a private pilot, the endorsements needed to get your student pilot certificate, what endorsements you need for your solo, what endorsements you need for your solo cross country. Now we are getting to your private pilot check ride. So to start off, we have regulation 6135, 61103, and 61105. Essentially, this is going to cover that you've received ground instruction. You're eligible to take the private pilot check ride, and you have the required knowledge to take the written test. So those three are just kind of sandwiched together. They all fall in the same category. We can go into that further if you would like. I see no hands raised. All right, next we have 6139, Alpha, Bravo, 1, and 2. And that is just going to cover... Oh, my bad. We completely skipped one. So we're going to go back to 6139, Alpha Bravo 3. And that's going to say that if you have less than 100% on your written test, you're going to review the incorrect answers and correct those deficiencies. Now, let's say you take your private pilot written test and you get less than a 70%. Unfortunately, you do need a certain endorsement if you want to take that test again. And that's going to be regulation 6149. And that's going to be if you failed and need retest. I've put this in green here because it's repeated regulation going through your private, through your commercial. So, moving on from that, we have 6139 Alpha Bravo 1 and 2. Essentially, this is just going to say that you have the three hours of check ride prep, and that was, as you remember, in our dual given, a uh, part of our 20 hours. And that has to be done in the last two months. And also, this endorsement is saying that you as the student are ready for the check ride. If you're not ready, your instructor will not endorse you. So, moving on from there, it goes to 61, 103, 107, and 109. And those endorsements are essentially saying that you are eligible to take the check ride, which means you have all the prior endorsements we've talked about. You're proficient in the maneuvers and all the required knowledge in the ACS. And you have the required experience. And that required experience is going to be the 40 hours total time with your 20 hours dual and 10 hours of solo. With all of that, you are now ready to take your private pilot check ride. And if you get a letter of disapproval, you will have to get a 6149 endorsement. And that's going to be a fail and retest. And when you fail, this is essentially saying that your instructor has reviewed over everything you failed and everything you need to get covered, and you are now able to retest again. So to wrap it up, so far what we've talked about is the requirements to become a private pilot, what you need to get your student pilot, what you need to solo, what you need for a solo cross country, and all the endorsements you need to take your check ride for the private pilot certificate.